So as most of you guys know, I'm an evangelist. I go out and tell people about Jesus Christ. I give them gospel tracts. I preach the gospel. Yesterday we went preaching on the beach for the first time in Chicago. It was amazing. Man, the demons manifest. But part of my job as an evangelist is to get people to come to the kingdom. If they need deliverance, casting demons out of them. Um, that's my job requirement. That's what I like to do, help people, get them set free. If they need money, I help them out financially. But I'm going to be talking about Anna's deliverance. So Anna and her family, they're from Colombia. All throughout her life, she's 44. Uh, all throughout her life, she's been seeking God, going to different churches, but not finding God. So her and her boyfriend which she calls her husband, but they're not married, so they were living in fornication, and they have a 22-year-old son. So they were living in fornication for like 24 years. Um, they came to America searching for a better life, looking for a, a big dream. You know, people come to America because they want to prosper. They want to get out of their poor country, and they want to prosper in America. So they came to America, about four months ago, about three months ago, she came over here looking for an apartment. So I showed her the apartment next door because I work for a woman that has properties and I do property maintenance. And when people move out, I paint, um, I paint apartments, get them ready for the next people. To, it's like a revolving door. People move out a year later. I got to go in and repaint everything, get it ready for the next tenant. Anyway, enough about that. So she came over to look for an apartment, and I prayed for her and her son. They don't know any English. I don't know any Spanish hardly, so we had to use Google Translate. The power of God came on them really, really strong. So they started crying. The Holy Spirit came on us all when I prayed for them. So she knew there was power in Jesus Christ. So here about uh, a week ago, she texted me and said, can you, can I come over? I need prayer. So she came over. We used Google Translate. She was in the hospital, in and out of the hospital three times with a heart problem. And they can't find anything wrong with her heart. So I knew it was supernatural. She came over here. I sat her down in a chair. Now, mind you, the son is a non-believer. I started praying for her, commanding demons out. And just so you guys know, they don't come out immediately. I was praying for her like 15 or 20 minutes before they started to manifest. And she got very angry. She started to get very angry. And she told her son he could speak a little English. He said, she's getting very angry. I said, yeah, I know. Those are the demons manifesting. So when the demons did come up, after about 15 or 20 minutes, the demons started kicking me trying to kick me, spit at me about three times, spit at her son. So we got the demon to come up. So I'm commanding all these demons out of her for like four hours that day. And then the next day, she comes over and we prayed from three o'clock in the afternoon to three o'clock in the morning, commanding all these demons out. I mean, they were making her hands bow up like that her face was getting really contorted just spiritual warfare spiritual warfare now you might say how come it takes so long to get these demons out well i read a book by win worley it was his pretty much his testimonies he said sometimes he would battle demons for in one person for 12 14 15 hours in one day some of them are hard to get out so and then the following day the third day we started praying and stuff like that. And then um, she got a lot more deliverance. And um, what I found out was a week prior to her coming over here, her son hired a, hired a witch. Now, mind you, he's a non-believer. He hired a witch to heal her hands because she had problems with her hands. Probably carpal tunnel or something like that. So he hired a witch to... Um, 
heal her. And when she moved to America, she broke up with her boyfriend, the, the mother of her, her child. And he hired a witch to put a curse on her because he was very angry. So here we go. We have two witches doing stuff to her in the supernatural. So we're commanding demons out, commanding demons out. And one day we were commanding demons out here. And they have relatives over in um, Colombia that are Christian and they know about deliverance. So they had them on video call, commanding demons out. I was commanding demons out. My Russian friend came over. We were commanding demons out. Now let me backtrack. So when she first came here, she doesn't know any, any English. I don't know any Spanish. But I'm commanding the demons out in English. And the demons inside of her manifested and started coming out. Like I said, after about 15 minutes. So the demons, they know all the languages. They're going to come out. So anyway, we found out that her son hired a witch. And her ex-boyfriend hired a witch. So we broke the curses. Hexes, bells, jinxes, vexes off of her. She started getting major, major, major deliverance. And um, so... Now, we found a spirit-filled church for her to go to. And um, she went to the church. She got she got slain in the spirit like three times. And God did a mighty work there. And there, was a, there was a very powerful woman of God, prophet. She prophesied over all of us. And the prophet said, she came over to me. You know, you know how you can go up to the altar call? Everyone came up to the altar call. And the woman doesn't know me. I didn't have one of my t-shirts on, my evangelist t-shirts on. She didn't know me from anybody. And she came up and pointed to me. She was on stage. She pointed to me. And I felt the power of God when she did that. She said, evangelist. And man, just the Holy Spirit went right through me. I'm like, the Lord was confirming that I am supposed to be an evangelist. So we got, we, he said, the Lord spoke through her and said, he's going to expand my ministry. And um, because I have a heart for the lost, so he said that. Um, and she also said, um, do you remember what happened to you when you were 10? And then the thought came to my mind when this one guy made me masturbate him when I was 10 years old. And I said, yeah, I remember. And then she said, well, remind you, the Lord was speaking to her that God is going to use that incident for you to help other people. And I've noticed he has when 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 I pray for women that were molested or people that were molested. I can relate to that, you know. I can relate to to getting those demons out of people. So and the Lord the Lord said he was very happy with me uh, because I I have a heart for setting people free. So anyway, back to back to Anna. So they came over to America to get rich or whatever to prosper, and they found Jesus Christ. So during the deliverance, um, we were here. She was sitting on the carpet, and the demons were manifesting big time, contorting her face, contorting her hands. Her hands were like that because the witches were trying to heal her hand through witchcraft, and the demons were coming out through her hands. So we kept commanding witchcraft out, curses, hexes, bells, vexes out. And um, she eventually got free. So now she's just going to have to keep up on the deliverance but her ex-boyfriend now he's seeking he's seeking to come to jesus but for the wrong reasons i've had three confirmations already that he's coming he's trying to come to jesus uh superficially to get back to her because he still loves her she doesn't like him because he's a manipulator he would slap her around he would be mean to his child so he's not a very good person you guys so we could pray for him if you guys could pray for him and to come to Christ the correct way and not to come to Christ. You know, Jesus is not going to put up with somebody coming to him to get to a woman. God will smite him down. And the prophet told that guy at the church Friday night. She pointed at him and said, God is going to come visit you. In other words, <laughs> you don't want to mess with God, man. So yeah, I helped him out um, since they're broken up. 
she was staying at her aunt's house over in Chicago and they wanted me to go do a house cleansing. So I went over there to do a house cleansing and the auntie, she's about as lost as any of them. You know, they have rose, they have rosary beads and there was like a dream catcher in every bedroom. I'm like, yeah, well, and Anna said that when she lived there, she was feeling very oppressed. And so I had her get rid of the dream catchers, get rid of the um, the rosaries. And Anna, when she came over here, she had like a, a crystal, a healing crystal around her neck. You guys, that's a big open door. You don't have healing crystals. We only go to Jesus for healing. So she took that off. And then um, we went over there. The auntie had dream catchers and everything all over. So um, we... Um, she got rid of them. I explained the gospel to her. We got rid of uh, the rosary beads. And I told her to find a good Christian church. So I'm pretty much discipling these people. And uh, like the woman upstairs, uh, she just moved upstairs. Anna did. And I'm going to keep working with her and her son. We baptized them in Lake Michigan yesterday. So they only had $300 to get out of the house because they didn't want to be there because... Uh, of all the dream catchers and stuff and they just felt very oppressed so I gave them uh, like 500 bucks to help them get the apartment upstairs and um, I, you know I gave them some pots and pans and stuff like that trying to help these people out that's the job of an evangelist and you might say well why'd you give $500 away you don't have that much money it's because when you look at it this way all the money that we have belongs to him you're not going to care about material things and God is very happy when we're not worried about money, when we can help other people out. So that's part of my job as evangelist. But back to her, when we were praying, she was over here on the floor. The demons actually made her pee on my carpet. You know, just kicking, being very violent. Very wicked demons. So in all during this whole time, hours and hours and hours of praying, hours and praying like four days total praying for her um we had to use google translate for everything so it was kind of cool how you know god reveals stuff to us and um so then i'm talking to a brother at, at church i used to go to the new testament church but they believe in the pre-tribulation rapture which i don't believe and they don't believe, like one time I was going to baptize a brother last year and I was going to this church and I told one of the members, he went like this, you're going to baptize somebody without the church? I'm like, what? Yes. So I got out of that dead religion because they don't cast out demons. They don't go preach the gospel. They don't do anything for the kingdom, but go to church and be pew warmers. And they're going to be judged for that. God gave them talents and um, they're going to be judged for that. But then um, I talked to a brother in Christ. He's a friend of mine from that church, Emmanuel. I said, yeah, we baptized them yesterday. He said, did you baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? I said, no, we just baptized them in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, you're apostate, and he hung up on me. So here's a scripture, Acts 2.38. Peter said to them, Repent, each one of you, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and he will, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And there's other scriptures too. Um, Acts 19.5 And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you guys can baptize. There's also scriptures saying that we should baptize in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So it just depends on what you want to do. As long as you're baptizing them in the name of Jesus Christ, I think it's fine. But he said I was apostate. And I, he said I needed more witnesses. It was me and my Russian friend that baptized them too. The, the, the mother and the daughter, Anna and her son. And he said we needed more witnesses. I'm like, my friend, you're stuck in a dead religion. Jesus sent them out two by two to heal the sick cast out demons and baptize people so i uh, thank god they got me out of that religious church you guys oh boy the dead religion if it was 
If I would have told the pastor over there that I was going to baptize two people, he would have been like, no, 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 you got to get the church to do it. I'm like, really? Come on, man. Come out of the dead religion churches, you guys. So that's pretty much what I'm doing, you guys. And plus making videos for YouTube. So um, remember, you guys, we have to be evangelists. We're in the last days. We got to get these people to come to Christ. And I have a feeling God is not very happy with Anna's ex-boyfriend that's trying to come to Christ to get to her. God's not playing around, man. God will spite him dead. So, yeah, if you guys could lift me up in prayers and um, lift Anna and her son up in prayers and new converts. And they need to stay close to the Lord. And, yeah, uh, we got to preach at, at the beach yesterday. It was amazing. So there's a long stretch of beach on, um, it's called Matros Beach in Chicago. I used to go there when I was a kid. My dad used to take me there when I was a kid. You know, the family there. It was really cool. But I never thought I'd come back to Chicago one day and I'd be preaching on the beach. So me and my Russian friend are preaching down the beach. You would not believe all the demon manifestations. Cursing us out, giving us the finger. And all we were preaching is, hey, where are you going to spend eternity? Do you know Jesus Christ will save you? And where are you going to spend eternity? Stuff like that. And giving them scriptures like, you know, for all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. God demonstrated his love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For by grace we've been saved through faith. You know, the Romans wrote scriptures and the demons were manifesting. So uh, that's pretty much her, her deliverance story. I do have a lot of footage. But I was going to put them on YouTube. But the Lord told me no. Because um, the deliverance is between her and Jesus. I'm just, you know, I'm just the guy that, that, that's activating. Uh, I'm not going to be putting videos of me casting demons out of people. I did put a couple short videos on Facebook. But when it comes to YouTube, the Lord told me, no, this deliverance is a private thing. It should only be between them and the Lord. That's why you guys noticed on my YouTube channel, I took all my videos down of me casting demons out of people. You know... And, and you might say this, well, I put them up there to show people that demons are real. I put the videos on there to show a lot of people that demons are real. There's other videos. Other people do it. I don't have to do it. So that's the conviction I got of the Holy Spirit, not to put any kind of videos like that of, of them manifesting demons, even though I did have their permission. I'm not going to put them on YouTube because the Lord doesn't want me to because that deliverance is between him and and whoever I'm praying for. Nothing to do with me. And I'm not going to try to glorify myself. Because I'm just a wretch. I'm just a, a wretched piece of dirt that God is using. But he's using me. So yeah, get out there and preach you guys. Ask the Lord what your calling is. You all have gifts of the Spirit. My gift just happens to be evangel of, uh, an evangelist. And I take that calling very, very seriously. I'm not playing around. I'm not. Um, I'm not playing around with this. is very serious. And in order to be an evangelist, you have to walk really, really, really upright. Because if I was hooked on pornography or, you know, drinking beer every now and then or something or playing video games, the Holy Spirit will convict me not to even go out and do kingdom work. And that's why um, I don't mess around. I'm not playing around. My life consists of reading the Bible, what's left of it, staying around here, just listening to sermons, praying for people, handing out gospel tracts. I'm not saying that to glorify myself. I'm just saying that if you want to be an evangelist and used by God, you got to come out of the world completely, come out of the church system. Another reason I left the church, I'm going to make this quick, is because one time we were worshiping on a Wednesday night, and only about maybe like 10 or 12 people were in there. They were playing worship music, and I was getting filled with the Holy Spirit. And I went up to the stage to grab a tambourine, you know, one of those things that you shake, whatever you call them, tambourine, I think. And I was just going to shake it and just make a joyful noise into the Lord. The pastor was up there, you know, playing guitar, and the band was up there, like a small Christian band. He had everyone stop what, he, what they were doing, and he looked at me and he said, we don't do that here. We don't do that here. We got to be part of the, uh, part of the. Uh, we have rules here. You got to be part of the band or whatever music. 
So that made me feel really bad, like it's some kind of religious demon in there. And it sure is because uh, I noticed the last pastor, they switched pastors a lot. The last pastor at that church, he was preached this. If your kids aren't baptized in the Holy Spirit, they're not going to make the rapture. And then the next pastor was preaching this. If if you don't come to every church service, you're not going to make the rapture. And the third pastor, the one that's there now, I said, Pastor, how do you get so many people to come on Wednesday night? Because nobody else did that the whole four or five years I've been going there. He said, it's easy, William. I just call the parishioners up and I tell them that I set chairs out just for them for Wednesday night. I'm like, oh, no, that's manipulation. You guys, come out of the church system. Just come out of the church system. If they're not the full gospel, if they're not going out and praying for people, bringing them into the kingdom, casting out demons, helping them financially, then you can you need to come out of that church. Come out of that church, my friend. If they're not doing everything according to the Bible, you come out of that church and be separate because you don't need to be plugged into a church that church I was going to for four years or five years, it was like stumping me. It was like, okay, I have a spiritual growth. I'm going to keep growing spiritually because I'm teachable. That's how the Lord Jesus Christ showed me about deliverance. I didn't learn deliverance from man. The Lord Jesus showed me deliverance. He showed me divine healing. I didn't learn it from man. But when I was going to this church, nobody else was activating their gifts. I've never seen a devil cast out there, a demon cast out there. I never seen nobody get divine healing there. Although I prayed for two people that got divine healing. But I never seen nobody else get divine healing. It's because it's a dead religion. They don't go out giving out gospel tracts. They don't go out preaching the gospel. It's a dead religion, my friend. They're only there to, to be pew warmers. And yeah. So come out of religion and be separate, my friend. Anyway, this was supposed to be about Anna's story. So I kind of sidetracked. But keep praying for Anna, you guys, and her son that just accepted Christ. And yes, we baptize them in the name of Jesus Christ, which is the same as baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So yeah, come out of religion, my friend. All right, I hope this video will bless you. Keep looking up, you guys. Remember, it's not about us, it's about him.